Councillor Doucette. Um, which, which communities were just looking at, looking at it? The Blue West Village, right. The Blue West Village are very much interested in this. They've actually collected themselves and they've got uh, planning students who are watching what's going on here to develop their own neighborhood guidelines. Um, Councillor Nunziata talked about heritage conservation districts. That's a much more definitive and harder set of rules which, which creates um, much more inflexibility. So the notion behind these guidelines is to actually provide guidance, but at the same point in time, provide a fair amount of flexibility to the redevelopment and the revitalization of communities. And again, what we have to remember is you have to be careful. This is not about intensification in neighborhoods. Um, the gentleman that spoke about the development of Long, uh, sorry, um, Lakeshore, that's an intensification area. It's designated mixed use. The Long Branch neighborhood and the Willowdale neighborhood are designated neighborhoods. So it's about creating a regime where we can identify where maybe things are happening that are out of character with the neighborhood, which gives us another tool to talk to the, the people who walk in and say, well, I have an idea for my property. We can point to this tool and say, you know, have some, have some respect for this. Okay, so, but if I'm intent on severing my lot, um, I get a ne negative report from city staff, goes to the Committee of Adjustment, likely uh, refused, goes to local appeal body. Um, if it gets refused there, I get the opportunity to go to the OMB? No. Uh, the, the, the way that the rules are working around the T-Lab is the T-Lab is, for one of a better term, a de facto municipal board for consents and variances in the City of Toronto. Including lots of severances? Yes. That's correct. And the T-Lab has to operate under the premise of the official plan and the provincial policy statement. Is that correct? That's correct. So they have to give weight to all of these things. So it's, again, let's be honest. Yeah. In any board hearing, any T-Lab hearing is a bit of a crapshoot. Nobody right. can guarantee any outcome. And it will be up to the individual members to, prov to provide whatever weight to the growth plan, the PPS, the city's official plan, the zoning bylaw, the neighborhood guidelines, the evidence given by professional planners or architects on either side of whatever matters before them. So it, it's, again, it's another tool for T-Lab to use as well when they're weighing differing viewpoints on right. development. But they're free to weigh those viewpoints. That's why they're in those chairs. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Councillor Campbell was first, uh, and then for, for Mr. Cresswell, uh, why, why would this uh, a report of this nature not come through the Planning and Growth Committee? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, because the neighborhood guidelines are very much neighborhood focused. In in this instance, in Long Branch, okay. so um, we did debate whether to take it to um, Planning and Growth Management Committee, but uh, there are a series of, of um, um, guidelines and rules that Council instituted in oh my gosh about nine maybe it's about 2000, 2002, about what goes to, sorry, Planning and Growth Management Committee and what stays in the Community Council. So um, we, we did have that conversation internally, but we thought because this was a locally based issue and it was around local development in Long Branch that it was appropriately brought here. Is this, as Councillor Doucette pointed out, this is a fairly rare occurrence that a, a neighborhood report this comprehensive in scope has been produced by city planning, is it not? Uh, yes, that's quite true. Um, quite frankly, it has been two years worth of a lot of work. It has been two years worth of a lot of uh, public consultation by planning staff, um, by the consultants. Uh, we just felt that it was uh, important to um, provide another layer of protection for the city's official plan. We, again, we, we moved OPA 320 to strengthen the neighborhood policies in the official plan. That's under appeal at the municipal board. So again, again, as I said, Councillor, this is another layer of adjudication for what was appropriate development in the stable neighborhoods. Does, does this have more authority or is it different than a site and area specific policy? It would have, if you want to use the term authority, it would have less authority than a site and area specific policy because SASPs are actually in the official plan. So it is a local area policy that's embedded within the official plan. 
um, this will have weight of hopefully city council because we will be able to take these guidelines and say our city council has adjudicated these guidelines, our city council has endorsed these guidelines, therefore it has the weight of city council behind them. All right, thank you very much. Councillor Holliday. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like one of these for a neighborhood in my ward. Can I put a motion today, or what's the what's the process going forward? And uh, yeah, oh, but I mean seriously, because I mean th that'll be the question coming out of the meeting here, right? Is is all of the other people that that gain interest on this, and maybe the the second follow-on question is part of it is is what's what's the right time to do this? Is it is it once a neighborhood's already kind of down the path of flux, or is it is it something you're identifying neighborhoods that are on that cusp and you want to get them in place before things do start to go astray? Okay, I'll answer the easier question for you, which is the second question. Um, and that is, it would certainly be my recommendation that your communities do them as soon as they can. Because again, it, as I keep saying over and over, Councillor, it, it's another toolkit for people to understand change in their neighborhood. Um, yeah, uh, we fully anticipated when we launched this program that there would be questions about, well, me too, me too, absolutely, no question about it. The intention, as we say in the staff report, is this was a pilot project to provide an example of what these things could look like, what you need to give attention to. We needed to suss out with a community what they felt were the important features of their community. So the idea is to create a template that your community, the Councillor Doucette's community, the Councillor DiGiorgio's community, the Councillor Mamalidi's community can take that template and internalize it in their own way and say, this is what is important in my community and then bring it forward through you for us to use when we're adjudicating applications in your community. So that's the intent of creating the template. As James has said, the template itself isn't ready. We're tweaking it because, again, it's, it's, it's been an interesting process to go through to see what was very, very important to the, neighbor, the neighborhood in Long Branch and what's been very, very important to the neighborhood in Willowdale. So the, the, the end part of this is a template that every community can use to create its own set of what it thinks is appropriate guidelines to help guide development within the context of this city's official plan. <laughs> Any other questions to staff? Uh, there being none, thank you. Councillor Grimes. Thank you, Councillor Crescenti. Um, so I have a motion I'd like to move here. City Council requests the Long Branch Neighborhood Character Guidelines adopted by Council be used by home builders, the community, city staff, committees and appeal bodies to provide direction for the decision making as they develop plans, review applications and redevelopment or enhance the public realm. And I'll move the staff recommendations on top of that. So this will give it a little bit more teeth. Uh, I want to thank, start off by thanking um, the members of the community, many of them uh, that came forward with these issues started a couple of years ago. Um, that we saw the Long Branch uh, um, Resident Association formed out of this. But I also want to thank city staff. Sabrina Salatino did a lot of work initially to get this going, James and his team coming in. But I can tell you, um, when I came in in 03 and 04, you know, we had a kind of stagnant uh, boulevard and lakeshore like the lady Deputy moved into the 70s, as opposed to the next beach is west, which I hate that term. Long Branch is a very historic name, but we did the Avenue site, which allows a six story, very European street front. We're starting to see the fruits of that. Uh, Arvin Meteor across the street where the beer store was. Uh, that was always contemplated. We took that out of the plan. We didn't want to force that employment up, but we saw that evolving once Arvin Meteor left and, you know, uh, Castro's there. We protect them, we're protecting them, but we saw that that would eventually evolve. Through that, you see the new buildings coming, a new retail. You heard someone talk about got the new restaurants, the new shop, which people are screaming for. So it, we're starting to see the fruits of Lakeshore. But we are under siege in Long Branch. And I can tell you, there's not a lot of people lining up at my office in favor of the lot splitting. There's a couple of deputies today uh, that do live in the community. And, you know, they, they live there and they've lived there for a long time. They're moving forward with their, with their lawsuit. I'm not anti-development, but we are under siege. So what would happen is it would go to the Committee of Adjustment, um, Sometimes you get through, we'd appeal at the OMB, and uh, some we win, some we lose. What we started doing after we sent letters in the community adjustment, the community got organized, we would go to the uh, community adjustment, and they would send it back for a public consultation. We had some successes with that. When the developers sat down with the community, there were some wins, not all the time, but, but these guidelines here, I think, will give us a little more of that. But, um, you know, developers coming in, hacking out these 100-year-old trees, 
and there's good developers and bad developers, but you know, I'm not representing the developers. They're coming and hacking out, you know, this, this fired up the community, and, and they were ticked off, to put it mildly. So uh, ask planning to look at this, and uh, I think Councillor Fillion's going through the same uh, problems I'm having, but again, this was something that came forward, and, and I know a lot of these councils here go to the community adjustment, and I don't have a lot of letters to support to, to sever these lots. I have six, seven, sometimes 50 names opposed to a, a lot split building two houses. So I represent the community, and that's what they asked me for. I brought this forward. I know some people are happy with it, but I think you know, this is the will I have. When I have six, seven people every time on a lot split, their neighbors, direct neighbors, send letters to me, that's who I represent. So I want to thank planning staff uh, for uh, bringing this forward, and I'm uh, asking for your support, and ask for a recorded vote. Okay, so we have a request for a recorded vote. Uh, so Oh, another speaker. All right, Councillor Desai. So as you heard, my residents, uh, Blue West Village Residents Association, who were here today actually speaking on another item, um, they have had some university students do something very similar to this, and it's actually connected with their university course. So we are hoping that the information they've gathered, we can fit into this template. Um, and I think it's going to be very successful, but it's good to have a template which allows councillors to bring in university students, to allow them to explore what it's actually like to work with planning, work with councillors, work with the public. Great experience for them. And we're hoping also to give some guidance to people who are coming into our, our area wanting to build monstrosity mansions which don't fit on the property because then you have no soft landscaping at all which means you get basement flooding. Um, so looking at a community, not stifling it, not stopping it, but building which fits with a community. So I think this is a great start. Um, I hope that my, my area will be using this template very, very soon. And uh, as I say, just guiding people as they're coming into our community and what they can and cannot, or should or should not build. Thank you. Okay, so the item is amended by Councillor Grimes, recorded vote. Councillor DiGiorgio, uh, Councillor Doucette, uh, Councillor Palacio, and Nunziata, myself, Councillor Grimes, Councillor Holliday, and Bichano, and Councillor Maliti, Campbell, and Councillor Ford. Unanimous. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Okay, moving right along. Tw EY 26.7, request for direction report 3526, Lakeshore Boulevard West, zoning bylaw amendment, draft plan, and subdivision site plan control applications. <coughs> Um, speakers on the item, Andrew, John Reed, Mr. John Reed here. Oh. I'll just let people clear out a little bit so you. Floor is yours, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So again, the name is Andrew jean -Ry. I'm the solicitor for the applicant. Um, I'm not going to take up a lot of time. I know it's been a long day. Um, I'll just want to start off by saying that um, my client and really appreciates the efforts that have been undertaken by staff with respect to this application so far. And we're supportive of the direction taken in the recommendation report, uh, subject to two small amendments that we've discussed with staff that I'll touch on in a moment uh, to their recommendations. Those two small amendments actually apply uh, to section or recommendation, I'm sorry, 4E. The first one would just be having 4E end at the, uh, take down the sentence here, the third the line network would have a period after that. And I'm happy to explain the, the details of why that is. This, essentially, the, there is a recommendation to address the issue, and it's been just recently brought to staff that addresses this concern that's raised here by um, 
engineering construction services but the solution is just slightly off side the dips and so the solution wouldn't actually meet that so we think that it's more appropriate that the insurer and I believe staff agrees with us that we obviously bring a solution that is to the satisfaction of the chief engineer and executive director but if there is a solution that works for everyone that's just slightly off side of dips that it would still have the flexibility to accept that and the second one is is purely technical on recommendation seven it currently says that it talks about on the second last line street a so this is talking about frontage on street a there is no street a in this particular application because street a was actually in the application next door that my client did previously and so it's actually street b very small technical item but just something we didn't want to hold up matters later um with those two small changes again we would ask that uh community council please adopt the directions report and set it off for recommendation to council um my client commits to continue to work with staff to resolve the issues that you see set out here in the um uh recommendations and we're happy to address any questions that community council might have questions yeah. councillor holly so what's the issue with the dip standard the the issue speaks to the width of the road to the width of the right of way. So the way it's been designed now is the width of the street, so it's, it's, there's a street A and street B, but if you've seen the plan effectively, sorry, street B and street C, see I just fell for the same, same problem. It's a, a road that goes in the site, turns up and heads um, north and comes out. The right of way of the street actually narrows from 18.5 meters to 16.5 meters, but the of, of the, the whole right of way but the road stays the same 8.5 meters in the dips standards as the right of way shrinks the street the physical road should also shrink but the more appropriate traffic solution was to ensure that we maintain the same width of the street so as not to throw people off while driving through the neighborhood okay. thank you you're welcome I uh, just have a quick question so I guess you, your client's concern is that we're, you've gone through a few planners on this project, correct? And we're losing the planner eventually soon. So I guess you're going to want to escalate. That, that is correct. And yes. Okay. Yes. That was my question. Great. Thank you. I'm happy to address any others. If not, I'll. Any further questions? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. Any further speakers to the item? Seeing none. Uh, questions of staff? Seeing none. Uh, I have a motion I'll be put on the screen. I'm a man in motion. Deleting from recommendation four the words that met the city's development infrastructure policy standards requirements. So it reads now reads the owner submits to the satisfaction of the chief engineer and executive director of engineering construction service for an updated public road. And then number two is the one there is really no street A, should, street B is just technical. So I'll move that with the staff recommendations. Uh, this is, I just talked about this in the last item. This is uh, the Ar old Arvin Meteor site. Minto's picked up the property. Um, this is probably the last phase uh, for now on this. It's, a, it's the uh, avenue. We're going to have a four-story building there, a great building. I think we're going to get there with staff. I just think they're concerned with time. Um, and uh, Pedro Lopes is here, a former city work for city planning. So I have a lot of confidence in our planning staff and, and uh, Minto get, get this done. So this is uh, um, uh, another great development and great for our, our Main Street and Long Branch. So uh, I ask you to support that. And uh, good luck with uh, getting put together with staff and working things out. All in favor? Opposed, carried. Clause amendment, all in favor? Opposed, carried. Okay. Not yet. Okay, what do we got here? We got 2610, uh, 3415, 3490 Western Road. Um, do we have a speaker on this? Caitlin Allen from Wellsfields. Good evening now, welcome. Yeah, I guess it is. Now, good evening. <laughs> so, um, my name is Caitlin Allen. I'm a planner with Bouse Fields, and we're the consultant for the applicant um, with regards to their site at Finch and Weston, and specifically for the second phase of their four phase development. I just wanted to uh, briefly thank staff and the counselor for their efforts on this file and identify that we will look to continue to work with the city to address the outstanding items. Um, identified in the request for directions report prior to the OMB hearing and we share staff's opinion that the proposed phase two development is an appropriate form of intensification for the site which introduces 
new rental residential units including family sized units in addition to new community space also as stated in the report the proposal would integrate well within the existing and planned built form context and contributes to implementing the vision of the emory village secondary plan i'm here to answer any questions that uh, you may have thank you questions seeing none questions of staff oh no that's good sorry any further speakers seeing none questions of staff yeah councilor mandalini questions of staff yeah so i i'm uh i'm uh, concerned uh, not concerned but I, I at the beginning of of this whole thing years ago and as we went along we were told that withholds on properties they're not appealable to the omb when did that change I guess the solicitor might want to answer that. I, I'd understood from the planners that holds in communities were not appealable to the OMB. Uh, holds uh, and the zoning bylaw um, are not appealable except by the owner. The owner can appeal the municipality's refusal to lift an H, um, but no one else can. I see. Uh, like a, a neighbor couldn't appeal a uh, lifting of an H. I see. So the owner can appeal That's the right. lifting of an H. That's right. And that's what's happened here? Uh, yes, it is. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so there is a package in front of us. Uh, I'll ask uh, the planners. Um, it's also my understanding that that uh, there's been some dialogue with respect to Section 37. That's the case. That is correct. Why isn't this a little higher than than it's than that's there right now? Are you referring to the cash contribution? Yeah. Uh, so what is included uh, is a uh, million dollars that would be used in the Emory Village secondary plan area. Um, along with that uh, cash contribution, uh, we have secured 2,500 square meters of private, openly, uh, privately owned, publicly accessible space as well as securing 4,000 square feet of community space within the development, two of which is at nominal rent and two of which is at market rent with an additional 1,000 square feet, so a total of 5,000 in uh, that would be located on the ground floor of building K. So it, it was a package deal. So the, the cash contribution went down because we negotiated the other part of the package? That's correct. So ca the, the parks levy, or the, the, the parks contribution, the communities only, only are able to keep 5% of that if staff feel that they can't recommend to keep the money in the community for a park? You're probably addressing me on that one. I, I'm, 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 address, I'm, I'm addressing you uh, so, okay. on, on that issue. So as, um, as I'm sure all of you know, this, this site is uh, subject to, well, you, the subject is site, uh, subject to the, part, to the uh, alternate rate for parkland dedication. And as all of you guys know, uh, the way the, uh, the alternate rate of parkland dedication works is it's at a rate of 0.4 hectares per 300 units with a minimum of 5% of the value of the, of the project. However, there are caps depending on the size of the project below one hectare, or sorry depending on the size of the um, site area less than one hectare it's a 10 percent cap one to five hectares it's a 15 percent cap 15 to 20 hectares or five hectares and uh and greater it's a 20 percent cap so in this case we fall into the uh into the 15 percent cap uh the site area is somewhere between well, the, the entire site area all three phases is subject to um is about is is between one and five hectares in size, so the way it works is um, the parkland dedication is at 0.4 hectares per 300 unit with a cap of 15 percent. The first five percent, as all you know, um, according to the um, the council adopted um, bylaw, the first five percent goes into uh, four pots at a citywide, uh, a quarter of it going to uh, acquisitions, a quarter of it going to improvements. 
okay. citywide and so on and so forth. And, the, and then the rest, above 5%, stays How much is staying in locally. How much staying in? This is a pretty big development. Yep. So if and, we're talking and, and about. They're asking for a lot more density than, than what the sec secondary plan had asked for. They, they've chosen a site behind them to ask for more density. And you're, and, and there's a big parkland that we want to turn into uh, the, the Aboriginal um, park, the first park in the, in the country, I think. Um, and why are we not suggesting that money stay in the community in order to build that? Uh, through you, Mr. Speaker, as as part as as was just going to, it is is it's an adopted policy in terms of how the parkland dedication works. You ask how much will be staying I, in a 15% scenario like this. The first 5%, so one third goes to the citywide. You will keep the two. Sorry, this Ward Seven will stay. The rest of the money will stay within Ward Seven. So, an example, if it's a total of one and a half million dollars worth of uh, park of parkland dedication, the first five hundred thousand dollars goes into the pot of uh, the citywide and the one million dollars stays within Ward 7. Right. So how much is the park dedication for this site? Um, it's subject to the value of the property on the day before the applicant picks up the building permit. Uh, I suppose this is already public. Um, I'd be happy to show you the example of uh, fa phase one, how it worked. I think my colleagues should hear it too. Like. Okay. My point is, you know, we're only going to get five percent of whatever that. Oh, you're getting ten percent. Well, you're getting two thirds of it. Ten percent. Given the fact that there's no money for the the, the First Nations Park, I, I'd like you to tell me how much that is. So before I tell you that, I got the numbers right here for Phase One. You're actually getting sixty-six percent. So when I say five, ten, ten and fifteen percent, that's the value of the property. You're getting the Ward Seven is getting sixty-six percent of the total parkland dedication. Let me give you an example. The example actually is 3415 to 3499 Western Road, Tower 1B. In 2015, the parkland total, the total parkland dedication came to $834,000. Of that $834,000, $275,000 went to the citywide, and $550,000 stayed local. Sorry, what stayed local? $550,000. Where is that money? It's. I'm not. It's either in your coffers or it's been spent. I can, and I'd be more than happy to who, get that information. Who would have spent that? Park line, parks would have spent that through uh, your guidance. Through my guidance. But we, it may not have been spent. I'd be more than happy. Tomorrow I'll get you the information. I'll get it from our so capital the, budgets. The Eight hundred and some odd dollars. Park. So last question, Councilor Mayor. Last question. Do we have enough money to build out the, the First Nations Park? I'm not familiar with the landscape plan for the First Nations Park. But Parks was at the meeting the other day and supported it. That we could have been capital? I'm not familiar with it. You don't know? I, d I don't know what the budget is, nor do I'm not even sure of the um, the tenure of the park. Who owns that land? Who's going to own it? Who's going to run Hydro it? Who's going to operate Hydro it? Hydro owns it. I'm sorry? Hydro so Hydro owns, owns it. Okay. Usually right. Section 42 money stays within park. U Parks. Okay. Usually. Yeah. Any further yeah. questions? Yeah. Councillor Campbell. So my question is is uh, more to Mr. Mr. Cresswell. So this is um, and I understand I understand yeah, I understand staff is very very busy. This is the third report that's arrived on our desk today that we haven't had time to digest. Um, I I don't know. I mean, should this what would be the consequence if this report was deferred till the next day or, I mean, so that so that the councillor and the other councillors had I, I don't feel that this is necessarily good governance for, for an issue like this to land on our desk and I just would like to hear your comment that's the only reason well quite bluntly through you mr. chair the reason why this report did not make it onto the agenda in time is we were in very significant negotiations with the applicant over the section 37 quantum as Sabrina has expressed the section 37 quantum in the report is a negotiation between city staff, the ward councillor, and the applicant. Um, and it is, as Sabrina has characterized it, there's a cash contribution, there is a POPs commitment, there was a debate about, if you will, the value of that commitment, the size of that commitment, how it was going to be put together. Uh, we also negotiated an additional 1,000 square feet of community space under 
recommendation, bear with me. Recommendation 2D on page four. So the, the, the commitment w through phase one to was to provide for 4,000 square feet of community space. Uh, we thought it was appropriate in consultation with the ward councillor to try to bump that up through the section 37 conversations. So uh, quite honestly, councillor, the report was ready to go uh, at, the, at the agenda deadline, which is why we issued the public notice. Um, the section 37 discussions took longer to nail down than we anticipated. Okay, we, and, and presumably reports on this development have come to this community council previously. Uh, no, I don't believe so. The only thing we would have would have been a preliminary report prior to this. So a preliminary report would have come in okay. and that would have been put before community council in the usual manner. And since that point in time, we have been working with the councillor uh, and the applicant in terms of developing an appropriate development. All right, and I, I gather that there was a community consultation and no one showed up from the community. That's correct. If you if you remember the history on this, community council directed that the community consultation be here at community council, and no one attended community council. That's correct. That's it. Thank you for the uh, time, uh, chair and pension. Any further questions? Seeing none. Councilor Mamaliti. So this goes back a long way. There's been negotiations at the OMB, and I get I get that we have to settle on the section 37. That's no issue here. Uh, what, what is that issue here is now we've got a First Nations Park right next door that's being uh, approved and, and by council and going through the process with the three leaders with no money. And, and I know you're saying there's a million dollars there, but the million dollars isn't going to cover what, what, what might, might be needed in the community, even based on the other, the other parts of the equation that were already negotiated. This, this density is higher and more than was anticipated in the secondary plan. So the community does feel that there's not enough money for, uh, for the density that, that now is being proposed. When this site was negotiated, it was negotiated as one site, right? And instead of, of going back and renegotiating the whole site, we are now dealing with an appeal on one part of that site. That's completely different than what came to us at the beginning of this whole process. So the community feels almost abandoned because they felt, well, if you're going to renegotiate this, then why aren't we renegotiating like we did at the beginning of this with the whole site? Staff have explained that we can't do that, that we, we need to make the, this, this, kind of, uh, this kind of an agreement right now to move forward. And I don't disagree with it. I just think that the community has been left out and hanging dry on money that's, that, that perhaps could have come through Section 37. So now we got the Parks Fund, and I've always maintained that it's kind of unfair, especially to the suburbs, to accept 5% and the rest of the money to go somewhere else. And, and I still mean, uh, sorry, I, I have this motion I wanted to pass. I did talk to all of you about it, and, and it's, it's to keep the uh, Parks uh, Dedication Fund in the community for that specific First Nations uh, project, okay? Uh, and, and I wanna do that because there isn't enough money to, to deal with that. I don't wanna lose this, the, the money um, uh, for, for Parks Levy to go somewhere else because this is a very precedented uh, a park that we're trying to create up in Emory Village. Uh, and we have the three leaders uh, involved with this in the First Nations and and we need the money to be able to build it. So this is our only kick at the can. I, we won't be able to, to find that kind of money to build the First Nations Park, so that's why I moved the motion. So for me, it's about uh, moving forward, yes. I hope that we don't have to endure yet another, uh, another application with, with huge densities uh, on this corner and have to renegotiate this thing again. Mm -hmm. I am proud of what the, the planners have done with the file. I just, and they know this already, I'm just not happy with the, with the section 37. I think it should have been more based on, on the history of this. By the way, this goes back 19 years. So, um, so we were there right from the beginning. So the community and those that have negotiated agree with me um, on this. So I, I hope that you can see it, uh, your way to recommend the council 
um, that the money stay in in the community. Okay, for this for this reason. Thanks, Councilman. Any further speakers? Seeing no further speakers, let's just vote. Okay. Councilor Mounties, amendments on the screen. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Clause amendment, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much. 26.28, speed limit at 32nd Street. Um, we have a speaker, Tara McNally. I have a speaker. Um, Is where? McNally, the, no? She's not here. Not here anymore? Okay. Um, questions of staff? No. I'm not, I, you know, I'm just going to vote against it. I'll be the only no, one. I, what are you voting on? No, I'll take your question. So, well, what number is it? It's uh, 28. 30 20. kilometers. It's not moving 30, it's moving 40. Who's, who's, uh, who's is it? Mine. It's yours? Well, let's vote on it. Okay, he wants to ask questions of staff. Oh, okay. You no, can ask I'm good. good. Can you good? I'm so good. Okay. okay. Mr. All right. Chairman, can I just, I have to go. So no, can, can I we just finish? We've got staff with us. Okay. Oh, Mark, we're good. We have no okay. questions. Okay, so um, 32nd Street's a cut through. People had get the red light heading up. eastbound on Lakeshore. They cut up through there, and uh, I, 30 did not come back, so I'm going to move a compromise. We move from 50 to 40. My amendment is on the screen. Approval speed reduction from 50 to 40 on 32nd Street. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, 32. Traffic calming on Rustic. Uh, John Marchetti? Is Marchetti here? Sorry? Okay, well, I gotta, I gotta call him out, Councillor Georgia. Staff recommendation. So 32 is, uh, who's is that? Councillor Giorgio, 32. Question yeah, of staff? I will, move, I will move the approval of the uh, speed humps, Mr. Chairman. This is uh, uh, an area where there are four schools in the surrounding vicinity, and uh, you know, there were a couple, there were three people here that really wanted to uh, communicate with the uh, with the council. But uh, anyway, I just ask you to support me on this particular application. Yeah. I gotta, I, I, I'm going to speak to this. Well, we're voting. You I'm going to speak to it. Speak after. He he moved the motion. Now okay. Speak. Question the mover. No, I don't have a question the mover. But okay. Okay. Well, well, just relax. First one to speak. Now I can Chill speak. out. <laughs> okay. The motion's on the screen. Uh, Councilor Campbell to speak. I wish to speak to this, Mr. Let me just start your timer. Only this if only I, I have to wait to relax. Be, just think to relax. I have to wait to be recognized by the chair. So ballots returned 47%, not enough. Respondents in favor, 49%, not enough. Respondents opposed, 34%. 16 spoiled ballots. Actually, more people either voted against it or spoiled their ballot than voted in favor. I'm not going to, I, I don't know, I don't even, if I was the ward, I mean, I had a situation like this in my ward, and I said, fine, that's it, no traffic calming, not enough people in favor of it. Now, you're going to face backlash when these humps go in, you wait, it'll be, you know, there'll be a hump for you to crawl, crawl. That's what it means, that's what it <laughs> means to be a counselor, you know, stick your neck out when you know you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's Depends. what it means. Anyway. God bless Don't you. Don't get in front of, no, of a parade. I will not be driving down this street. That's one fewer car you you that will be traveling down, down that street. Relax. Okay, are we done? Okay. Councilor George, move them. Oh, okay. Councilor Crisanti, please. Focus. Focus. All in favor? Opposed? Just one. No, plenty of Councilor Okay, that carries. Thank you. Moving right along. Thank you. 23. Chairman, can I just um, move the EX, EY 2642 that Councillor uh, Ford and I put through because I have to leave. Okay, so we're good with the Councillor Ford and Councillor Lanzetta's motion. Yes. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Any other quick releases? I don't even know what the motion is. Yeah, I have. All right. uh, well, just, no, just calm down, Councillor George. Yeah, quick EY 26.23, right turn prohibition, Western Road and Star View Lane. Staff uh, recommendations because the councillor Campbell held it for, because he likes to hold everybody's issues on. Uh, Are you holding this? No, I, I'm fully in favor of the staff recommendations. Okay, okay. councillor Mamaliti. Just, just know that I didn't hold it. He held it and now is backing off. Okay, is this your recommendation? It's staff's recommendations. I'm not going to hold it. Okay, so we're moving the staff recommendation, councillor Campbell. So moved by councillor Mamaliti. This is 
Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you want to help him out or something? Okay, Councilor Memory's moving the staff approval. All in favor, opposed, carried. Number 40, Councilor Holliday. It is 40. Right here. Go to the pink sheets. You borrow mine? Go ahead. Councilor. I have three recommendations, Mr. Chair. I have no questions. I'd like to move that uh, we authorize the city solicitor to appeal a community adjustments decision regarding application AO237 slash 17EYK respecting 12 Shaver Court to the Toronto Local Appeal Body. Number two, authorize the city solicitor along with appropriate city staff to attend the Toronto Local Appeal Body to oppose the proposed variances requested in application AO237 slash 17EYK respecting 12 Shaver Court. And number three, authorize the city solicitor to attempt to negotiate a resolution of appeal with the applicant in consultation with the ward councillor and appropriate city staff. Thank you. I hope All you support favor. the motion. Question, Question the mover. I'd, I'd like to know if it's okay if we hire outside planners for this, if, if necessary. <laughs> well, uh, Councillor Campbell, if you were listening carefully, that is not mentioned in the motion. All in favor? I'd like to know if it's okay, though. Opposed? Yeah. Carried? Moving right along. 41. Is this Peace in the Valley motion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, the, uh, we, uh, we've agreed on a motion with Lee. Is this the Peace of the Valley? You made Rob happy? Well, not exceptionally, but we compromise. Well, that's good to hear, because I love this subject. Where is it? Is it on the screen? Rob's far away. He must be inside. <laughs> where's where's Councillor DiCiano? Okay. We all good there? All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Congratulations, Councillor Giorgio. We only got one in order. First, first one that's in order in the last uh, 42 we dealt oh, with, no, correct? Outside consultants in there, was it? So what's just left? 21? It, no one's here from the TRCA, right? Dave's not TRCA. I hate to put him under the ringer. He's doing so much for me right now. Okay, I'll just uh, move, uh, move receipt of 21. I'm sorry, David. I didn't know you were here for that. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. And I've got to apologize for my... Vice Chair this morning slowed things down. Now I'm here. We got things going. So, <laughs> Councillor Ford, you have a motion to introduce the next certain bills. Mr. Chair, the Tom Cleor Community Council passed and declares bylaws bills 1280 to 1287 prepared for the November 14, 2017 meeting 26 of the Community Council. The the Shall these bills be passed and declared as bylaws? All in favor? Opposed? Carried? You want a question? The mover? Sure. Councillor Campbell. At the Etobicoke. Well, oh, yeah, I haven't finished yet, Councillor Campbell. You have a motion to introduce an act of confirming bill. I do, Mr. You Chair. You read the motion now. That the Etobicoke York Community Council pass and declare as a bylaw conf a confirmatory bill to confirm the legislative proceedings of the Etobicoke York Community Council acting under the delegated authority at meeting 26 on November 14, 2017. We have a question of the mover, the Councillor Sang. Yeah, why do you say confirmatory twice in the same? I'm just uh, just uh, reading the words. Shall these bills be passed and declared as bylaws? All in favor? Opposed? Carried? Motion to adjourn. Councillor Campbell? Oh, yes. Uh, motion to adjourn is always in order. Try and get some sleep tonight, Councillor Campbell. You're very grumpy. Thank you, guys. Time for dinner and then out to meeting. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.